Hello, everyone. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Edwin Friedman's work, which I also mentioned in the announcement for this week and attached one of a document that uh, kind of describes Friedman's work. It's it's not very long. You know, it's just about 20 pages, um, but it's a very helpful introduction to uh, what I consider some important work on leadership. Edwin Friedman basically took Murray Bowen's family systems theory and applied it to organizations. So Bowen had the idea that the family is a system. So that if there is an emotional system, so that if there's someone in a family that's acting in an unhealthy way, the way to remedy that, the way to help that person acting in an unhealthy way to return to health is not by fixing the person with the quote problem, but by helping the healthy or the healthier members of the family respond in better ways to the person who is exhibiting the, the problematic behavior. So you work on the you work on the people that are already in a healthier place, help them to react in better ways, and that brings the person who's acting in a problematic way along. And if you think about it, that, that does make sense organizationally, that if you have somebody that's, that's acting in a problematic way in an organization, one of the best ways to help that person move toward a better way of acting is if everyone around them is, is not accepting their bad behavior, is in a, in a firm but gentle way correcting their bad behavior when it comes up. If you think of somebody that makes inappropriate jokes, for example, at work, there's there's kind of two ways that we tend to deal with that. Either we ignore it and say it's not my problem or we really pounce on somebody for acting inappropriately. But the, the healthier thing to do is to try to get everybody on the same page to not accept the behavior and to gently uh, confront it when it comes up. So Friedman Friedman applied the, the Bowen family systems theory to, to organizations and, and to leadership so that the thing for leadership really becomes the leader working on his or her own maturity, on his or, own, his or her own ability to deal with stress and anxiety and being more grounded. So it's not that the leader is saying, oh, this person isn't acting right, I better fix that or that person is acting in an appropriate way, I better fix that, they're the problem. But the way that the leader makes everybody in the organization healthier is first by working on him or herself. And one of Friedman's um, signature words is, or, or phrases is, being a non-anxious presence. And this ties into the reading that you had this week on change. When change happens, there's a lot of anxiety. The anxiety level in the organization goes way up. And if the leader picks up that anxiety and is also anxious, that it becomes a vicious circle of building anxiety and it's really hard to get anything done. Friedman says that one of the main roles of the leader is to be a non-anxious presence, to not let his or her own anxiety get out of control. And just by being a non-anxious presence, by reacting to the change in a healthy way rather than a, in, a, in a panicky way, that that alone will help others in the organization to move forward in a good way. So I just wanted to put some of those things out there. I, don't, I know that you're busy. I know that you have a lot of stuff to do and one more piece of reading right now might not be the thing you need and that's fine. But I just wanted to make you aware of this resource because it is uh, it is some of the most helpful work that's been done on leadership probably in the last 25 years or so. I look forward to more of your insights in the discussion forums. And if there's anything that I can do to be helpful, please get in touch with me by email, uh, text, or call. Thanks.